Let's go over how I spent my money this week as a 40-something year old corporate girly that would like to retire in eight years but has no retirement savings, is $95,000 in debt, $85,000 of that is student loan debt, and $10,000 is in credit card debt that I'd like to pay off by the end of this year, but I don't know how to do that because I don't make enough money. I know, I see you too. I see you too. I know you're here. I haven't forgotten about you. <laughs> Y'all, we have some major life changes this week. Before we start chatting it up, I'm wearing my Los Angeles hoodie. The one I got in the airport when I went to Tijuana, Mexico and got some dental work done earlier this year. And if you want to see the vlog for that, it's on my channel. I love you too. I haven't forgotten about you. <laughs> I have a very needy French Bulldog. I love that she's needy though. But stage five clingers, both of us, right? Both of us. Mwah. I love you. Mwah. You're gorgeous. Okay, major life updates, y'all. As you guys know, if you've been following me, if you're new, hi, welcome. I'm Rachel. We should do a full like get to know me video, I think. But this is not that video. We'll have to do that soon. If you want a get to know me video, comment get to know me down below and I will tally up and see if that is something that we should do. In the meantime, what we need to chat about before we get into how I spent my money for this week is if you've been following me for a minute, you guys know that I have two credit cards. Originally, I started with a Discover credit card and a Truist credit card. My interest on my Discover credit card was 23 or 24%, something like that. And I was desperately trying to pay it down off all the, all the things. So that wasn't working. So I went out into the market of credit cards and found a 21 months 0% interest with a 3% balance transfer fee. I started off with about $6,500 once I transferred that and paid for that 3% transfer fee. And now we are over to City Simplicity for our 21 months of 0%. We've been on this for about six months seven months i keep saying six months but it's probably been seven or eight months i'll have to tally that but we still have several more months to go is basically what i'm getting at and now we have a balance of twenty four hundred dollars on our city simplicity card and i am astounded and so proud of myself yay round of applause all of the things so since we are doing so good i want you to feel like I could actually get down to a reasonable balance before I transferred over my truest credit card. And now that I am sitting at 2400 and I have paid basically $3,000 off of my credit card, somewhere around there, I was like, it is time to move my truest credit card over to a 0% interest credit card. So that's what I've been working on this week. I went out to the market skin, found a 0% credit card for 18 months and a 3% balance transfer about as good as I could get out there in the market and moved my truest credit card over to a city double cash credit card. So now I have a city simplicity that used to be on discover and now I have a city double cash that used to be my truest. I am waiting for the balance to actually transfer. They said there's a hold on it until the 2nd of December something something that's what they normally do so we're just waiting for that to happen and then my truest credit card will be paid off and i am transferring over about sixty five hundred dollars on that but i thought to myself well i have several more months of zero percent interest i don't even think i have a minimum payment i double checked earlier this week and i didn't see a minimum payment due on my city simplicity that has a $2,400 balance. Now the other one hasn't fully hasn't fully like transferred over, so I don't really know what the minimum payment will be. So I'm kind of waiting on that to drop. Also, I do want to still pay them off in the zero percent interest time frame. 
So I do plan on putting money on them. I just don't think I have a minimum, which is kind of good because then we can focus on saving. So now what I've done is I normally I was putting $30 a pay period into my high yield savings account at Basque Bank and it currently has an APY of 6 point or sorry 4.65%. It was 4.85 but now it's dropped because they're dropping interest rates as they should. So we are going to start changing that up. I'm so proud of myself. And I know I, I'm light years behind everyone my age. I get it. I get it. Okay. I'm trying and I feel like I'm getting somewhere and I'm learning lots. And yes, I could have probably moved all my credit card over to a 0% interest credit card originally, but I also grew up in household with limited mindsets. Like my parents are very limited on what they believe they can do. And I feel like that has been something I've been working to overcome a lot more recently. I've always felt like I can do almost anything. and I've pulled myself out the trenches of life for myself. I know I don't have it as bad as other people. I get that. And I'm not trying to say that I'm better than anybody else or anything like that. But I have pulled myself out of some sticky situations I never thought that I was going to be able to you know, work my way out of the gutter on. And I feel like I still like suffer from a limited mindset sometimes. So we're working on that. That's one of my goals for 2025 is to be as delusional as possible, I guess, and not to have any limits on anything that I can do. If I want to do it, I'm going to try to do it. Okay. Like I'm trying to retire in eight years. Okay. And y'all trying to put me in this little box because I don't have any more retirement savings. And I don't care. I'm delusional as possible because I grew up with parents with limited mindsets and I refuse to have it. I refuse to have that anymore. That's not part of my journey anymore. That girl has gone and I'm a new girl. Woman, if you will. So now that we are doing all of this, I'm sidetracking, we are going to start putting $200 a paycheck away into our high yield savings account. So about $400 a month. Some months I get that extra paycheck, so $600 on those months. But every two weeks, I am a salary employee. So every two weeks, $200 will be going into my high yield savings account. Currently, the balance is $4,503.73. So I have a goal of saving $12,000 minimum. That's three months of paychecks for me. And it, since I live paycheck to paycheck, I basically am saving three months of paychecks because that's three months of expenses as well. For now, that's just our life. That's our truth. We're, we're going to be okay with that. I would like to save a lot more than that, but if we can start with three months of savings, I'll be happy. That, that's better than zero. And that's better than where we're at right now. So the, I think that is about $7,500 that I need to build up into there. And I do want to make a whole little tracker of like, like a spreadsheet tracker of how much it's gonna take me to get there from where I'm at now with APY and all of that. So I'm going to build that out. That's something I just thought about today. I was like, oh, I should be tracking my high yield savings account. I kind of just set it and forget it. It didn't track it at all. And now I'm like, mm, now that I, ha I have this whole like other plan and this whole goal and my credit cards have moved over to the side and stuff like that, I still want to try to put like $100 on each credit card a month. But we're going to trial run everything in December and see how it goes. And maybe I need to up the amount that I put into my high yield savings account. Right now, it's coming directly from my paycheck. So when my employer pays me, $200 goes to Bass Bank and the rest goes into my Truist, um, Truist Bank account where I do have a little bit of a cushion in there. I have about $2,500 that I keep in my checking account for just any day average kind of emergency or something like that. My high yield savings account is not my actual emergency fund. 
that I need for like, if I got a flat tire tomorrow, I do have money in my checking account for that kind of stuff. But I still want 30 days or three months of actual money set aside for actual things if I lost my job or something like that, you know. So I think we're doing really good. And now that we're done yapping, let's get into what we really get are gathered here for today. How I spent my money this week. <clears throat> and as a top of video of reminders, I am 42 years old. I live in the Tampa Bay area. I'm an empty nester. I'm a grandma. I have a cute French bulldog. She's laying down right here. I love her so much. I'll put a picture up of her. I love her. She's my everything. I paid off my car last year. I rented an apartment here and I'm a salary employee and before taxes, I earn about $75,000 a year. And I've been able to monetize my YouTube channel and stuff that I've been only making like $200 a month on that, roughly. So after tax, I bring home 2,159 or $2,150.59 from my paycheck after tax. This month, between my Amazon storefront and what I got paid out for YouTube, I brought home $229.40. That makes a combined bring home or take home pay of $2,379.99. And now that we are in the fourth week of the month, we can go over our pie chart at the end. I'm very excited for that. You guys are gonna roast me. I get worse about this every single month. I pay too much for a car wash membership. I like it, it's convenient, it's close to me, it's clean, the vacuums work all the time. You guys know how that can be. So I spent $48.12 on my car wash membership. I went out to eat a little bit this week and I spent $65.29 between a few different restaurants and situations. I spent $56 on buying my grandson some warmer weather clothes today. We went to Target and he didn't have barely anything my daughter said. So we went and stocked up on about four or five outfits for him. Something to get them through the colder months here um, down in St. Pete, Tampa area. I spent $131.88 on groceries. I spent $31.15 on gas. Hulu, we might be kicking it to the curb, honestly. I spent $11.31 on my Hulu membership. If you guys have been here for any amount of time, you guys know that I've been paying a dollar and 12 cents because I got Black Friday special last year. I don't know if they're gonna run Black Friday or not. I do watch Hulu like almost every night, but if I'm gonna, if they don't end up running Black Friday, I honestly feel like I'm gonna cancel and get Netflix because I feel like there's so much more that I am constantly seeing on social media, people talking about, you should watch this show, this documentary or something. If I'm gonna watch and pay for something outside of the cable that my apartment community forces me to get and I pay for with my rent, I uh, would much rather have Netflix. I don't think, I don't know. I know Netflix does tears, so I don't know if that would be comparable to the $11.31 for Hulu, but we'll look into this. I went to see if that Black Friday special drops because a dollar, a dollar a month for Hulu, you can't beat that. We'll see. I spent $2.99 on my Apple Care. That is for my storage, for my iClouds. I spent $108 on Amazon buying Birthday decorations for my daughter's birthday. She's turning the big 2-0. She's shipping out to be in the army and we just wanna make it a little bit special for her. So I got some birthday decorations and two little things for my grandson, a little toy and a teething toy for him. I spent $96.30 on some sweatpants for my daughter from Nike. They were having their little Black Friday, early Black Friday shopping prices and my daughter has 
a very specific wish list for her birthday and everything. So just went ahead and got a couple things on that. I honestly feel like I'm just going to give her the rest of the $200 that I allotted for for her gift in cash. And then she can just buy whatever she wants to her heart's content. I put... Um, I paid my electric bill of $102.29. That means I spent a total of $653.93 this week, leaving me with $789.65 till next paycheck. And honestly, because we're going to start having $200 come out of our paycheck and go directly into our high yield savings account, I'm going to use this because my rent comes out in between rent, groceries, gas, like that's pretty much my paycheck right there that I spend at the first of the month. So I'm going to be using this for gas and those sorts of things to help me make it through. So now what you guys want to see is how did my shopping for the last two weeks, my spending, stack up next to my budget, my budget for the last two weeks. So I budgeted $119 for my Truist credit card and that's what I paid. I budgeted $600 for my city credit card, and that's what I paid. I budgeted $240 for the last two weeks for groceries, and I spent $248.49. I budgeted $100 for the last two weeks for gas, and I spent $69.72. I budgeted $102.29 for my electric bill, and that's what I paid. I budgeted $17.79 for my SunPass bill, and that's what I paid. I budgeted $108.60 for my Amazon order, and that's how much I spent on my Amazon order. I budgeted $200 for my daughter's birthday gift, and I only spent $96.30. <laughs> Lost myself in the spreadsheet. I budgeted $0.75 cents in, for miscellaneous items, and I only spent $5.49 on that. And here's a few things I didn't budget for, but I still spent money on. Eating out, I spent $86.25 on that. Hulu, I spent a dollar, I spent $11.31 on that. Shopping, I spent $56 on that. So all in all, my budget was for $1,562.68, and I only ended up spending $1,000. $1,521.24. So even though I went over on some, I went under on some, we equaled out. And now for the long awaited pie chart. I'm so excited y'all. As you guys can imagine, 75% of my expenses went towards my rent, of course. 6% went to my dog getting her food and medicines and everything. We spent 9% on car insurance, 3% on groceries, 2% on gas, 0% on miscellaneous, 2% on eating out, and 3% on the business expense to close the businesses in North Carolina that I had that now that I live in Florida and I don't use. I am going to throw in my like entire monthly spreadsheet of budgeting so you guys can see everything because it's literally come a long way since we first started. I'm just so excited. I'm also going to start tracking, like I said, my high yield savings account. So let me know what you guys think about this little setup we got going on. If we need to add more columns, take away columns. Don't worry about the numbers in there. They're not accurate because I've already put the $30 for each pay period away. And the balance, the starting balance is what we are actually ending the month with. And we're going to start tracking it for for real, for real, for real next month. But let me know what it looks, what you guys think it looks like. I, I'm just, I'm really proud of where we've come from. What else can we track in here? Let me know because I'm down to add more things in here if we need to. Don't know what else to track, but we can track something else. All right. I love y'all and I will talk to y'all next week. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye.